Hey guys, before this video gets started, I just wanted to say 94% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. So if you could click the subscribe button, that would make me extremely happy. Without further ado, please enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video. Today, we are going to be going over the big and small forest, and what spawns in them, how to navigate them the easiest, and what to look out for. The small forest is procedurally generated on every server and every map wipe. This means it will never be the same on any two servers. You will visit the small forest whenever you are on the way to the climbing tower. Since the small forest is procedurally generated, the wood type it spawns will also differ per server. For example, on my server it is spawning redwood. The small forest will spawn two types of mobs as well, the first being dyes. The dyes come in three different forms, the baby, the male, and the female. The male die will have antler. It is a common misconception, but some players believe that the male dyes have a higher chance of dropping big leather. The female dyes are the most common of dyes. Killing these has a chance to drop dye meat, large leather rolls, and small leather rolls. These are needed for whenever you wish to either make a regular bag or a hoarder's bag. The next mob we will be seeing in the small forest is the Goteras. The Goteras that spawn in the small forest are typically regular Goteras. The small forest will also spawn vegetables such as carrots, potatoes, onions, and eggplants. These are needed to create stews and potions. Welcome to the Big Forest. The Big Forest is a massive, procedurally generated expansion with deadly floor and mobs. Some biomes have a chance of not spawning every generation, meaning while my server may have redwood, yours may not. My server this wipe sadly did not spawn any ashwood trees, but the ashwood goteras still spawned. The next biome is the most common of biomes in the forest. It is called the mountains. This biome is used to progress the player throughout the forest by allowing the player to climb over hills and through pathways. The next biome is the deadlands. In the deadlands you will typically see generic terabattas, some stone, and coal that you can mine. The deadlands are also known for the big spiky vines that will damage and slow the player if they get too close. The next biome we'll be looking at is the birch groves. This is my favorite biome as I love the color and the look of birch trees and the handles that they create. The birch biome will spawn birch goteras. The birch goteras attack is the same as a normal gotera except when they hit the ground much faster and explode on impact stunning the players making it more lethal for them to escape. The next biome we will be visiting is the walnut grove. The walnut grove will spawn walnut trees. The walnut trees require at least an iron axe to be chopped down. The walnut goterra variant's attack is a deadly one. If you get too close, they will spray their seeds in a buckshot pattern dealing high damage, but with the drawback of a slower shooting time than the regular goterras. They can also release goterra bombs that explode in a small radius after a few seconds. The radius is shown with a red circle around the bomb. The next biome we will be visiting is the Ashwood Grove. The Ashwood Grove typically spawns smaller in comparison to the others, but they are identifiable by the unique moths like leaves that hang from the branches. The Ashwood Tree requires at least a Mithril Axe to be chopped down. The Ashwood Goterra variant is the third most deadly out of the batch, as they attack with a stomping and it will hurt the player with a small amount of damage, but it makes up for its small amount of damage with a higher attack rate. The final biome that we will be looking at in the big forest is the redwood forest biome. The redwood forest biome is a rare one, and it is typically hard to find as it sits in the back side of the big forest. The redwood trees are identifiable by the tall red trunks that you can see over top of the other trees. 
The redwood tree requires at least a mithril axe to be chopped down. The redwood tree variant is the most deadly out of all Guterras. They specialize in short range attacks, such as the vine spike attack, where they will send a vine out from the ground to hit you if you get too close. Their shooting seed attack also deals a high amount of damage, which typically ranges anywhere from 3 to 5 hearts of damage per hit. The Redwood Gotera also has a chance to drop a Redwood Heart, which is needed to craft a Hebeos Mold for the Hebeos Weapons. The next mob we will be going over is the Babu. That Babu is a big hog-like creature that deals massive amount of damage to the player. During the day, the Babu will attack the player if it gets too close, whereas at night, the Babu will leave the player alone as long as the player does not harm the Babu. Worms. Just like in the mines and in the Dust Bowl, you can find worms in the Big Force as well. The worms will typically spawn in dirt bowls where they will be often fighting Gotera. The Spriggle and the Dragonfly are both harmless creatures that will spawn in the forest. One of the most deadly items in the Big Forest is the Death Fern. This flower will explode with a gas that can easily kill a player if they are not prepared for it. The gas deals heavy amounts of damage if you sit in it for too long and will deal lingering damage after you've escaped it. The Death Fern has two forms, the small flower that sits on the ground and the tall flower that will sit up with a large base. The next thing you may find is the Cave Elevators. These caves are hardly worth going into as they spawn a massive amount of worms and typically only have coal and copper inside. The Hanging Sack is a sack that will be hanging off of a wooden platform. When hit, it will drop the sack and release wooden boxes that can then be broken for leather and cloth bundles. The final thing we will be going over in the forest is the Life Vine Spire. Sadly, I could not find the Life Vine Spire in my server as it is a hard thing to find. The Life Vine Spire spawns life pods. They will be hanging off of the vines that wrap around the rock spire. These can be collected by the player. Using these, you can throw them at a player's feet to heal them for around 4 hearts. Thank you guys for watching this video and exploring the forest with me. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.